flip it over to Cincy here, guys. So again, ball on the left hash as we see it. Okay, they're going to be a deep left kick team. We have our field to the field and our boundary to the boundary. Totally fine. We want to drop with no key at all and get head up to our guys. At the very last minute, we would inch to our leverage. So right there, we should have a hat for a hat. Now, as you look right here, guys, we're pretty darn good here. We're pretty darn good here. Oops, let me see if I can get that to, to draw on here. There we go. Okay. If you look to the field right now on the hash, we're getting beat. So my guy has got to make sure he stops, does not chase, and legitimately turns and goes and gets the kicker. Or he goes and gets a safety. Or he leads all the way to the end zone, okay? Make sure you practice that. We have a couple drills. Again, if you watch the, the kickoff return drills tape that I put out that, that teaches that block, if, if we lose, just go get someone else. It's fine. We teach it's actually okay because what that does is it gets us to be very aggressive on the front line. And I should have mentioned that earlier. We can get very aggressive on the front line because I'm not worried about losing. So if I take a shot and I miss my guy, that's fine. Let's move on. The other thing that we do is we get a lot bigger on the front line, linebackers. and You don't have to use wideouts and DBs and those guys because, number one, they don't really love dropping and blocking. So we get bigger guys, tight ends, linebackers, maybe a smaller DN. that can run back there and really like to stick their face on somebody so that they're not scared to take a shot and block. And then what we do in the back end because we're blocking most dangerous man and we're in space, we try to get more athletic back there. That's a perfect spot for your running backs. They catch the ball on sky kicks, can field squib kicks, but they have great vision and they can block in space. You know, in pass protection, they're always moving. They're scanning inside out or they have a man on the edge that's coming off the edge and they got a lot of space and shake to them. So I, I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier in, in our personnel or when I was showing you the scheme, but this is a great look at it. We're going to lose a little bit, guys, and that's fine. That's a linebacker for us. He took a shot. He needs to make sure he turns because we have three guys in the back end that will pick that up and make sure the return gets started. All right, so we'll watch it. As we see it, guys, the guy in the middle, middle of the field is going to be a guy that loses right now okay and we'll pick him up in the back end it's fine he's got to turn and go get someone else so what i want to show you on that one we get the ball out outside the 30 okay out to the 33 34 yard line and we didn't block it great this is critical when you're when you're talking to your head coach or if you are the coordinator making the decisions explaining that this system and i'm a big believer in it will get every return started. You're never going to come out there with your offense at the 12-yard line, the 17-yard line, the 20. It just should never, ever happen, which I've done that many times in my career. I've, I've had some big ones, and I've absolutely been tackled inside the 15 many times. But when we switched to this scheme a couple of years ago, this allowed us to always have at least very solid starting position, starting field position. Okay, ball in the middle of the field, so it's a great picture at very good spacing. Okay, we got a triangle on the ball, 47-yard line, 47-yard line for the guards, the minus 47, and 49 up there by our tackles. All right, don't need to be real wide. You got plenty of space to play the play the bloop kick over there on the right of the screen, and then we're definitely good over here on the left with them not being super wide. Both of our tight ends are on the divider. And then we have a fullback in the middle of the field. A lot of guys might ask or, or text me and say, you know, how do you know if it's a middle of the field kick team? Well, we'll look at their kick chart. Where do they kick it the most? And if they just kick it all over, we'll have to obviously pick. This is our front side. This is our back side, our, our field and boundary. Okay. I can't remember exactly what we'll, we'll, we'll run the clip here in a second, but you'll have to predetermine who your field is and who your boundary is. And you should know that going into the week. Okay, so right there, our boundary was the left side. Okay, and I know that because we dropped 
to the middle of the field from the right side and we drop to the divider from the left side. Right now, and I, I pause it just a hair late, but two steps prior to this, you'd have no idea, guys, if we're going left or right. Again, we didn't run a lot of middle, but it was going to be left or right. So it causes a lot of hesitation, <coughs> excuse me, by the kickoff team. And now they're going to be chasing our returner. Okay, again, I really, really believe this guy, and he's with us this year. I'm going to coach the heck out of him. Okay, you got to stick to what the return is called. He likes to cut back across everything. Well, all of our most dangerous man blockers are leading out to the return that we call. They're leading way out to the right. So keep pressing it because we got a hat for a hat way over here to the right. We don't need to cut back across anything. Try to run it to where we have all those extra blockers going to. Okay, so there's a lot of space back there. Let me rewind this. There's a lot of space out here to the right. If I can get it paused in the correct spot here. Boom. There's all the kickouts. Like my guy's already cutting behind the goalpost right there up the field. We need to push this thing out to the right where we've got really three on two right there. Worst case scenario, three on three. And my guy that lost, <coughs> excuse me, right in the middle of the field will go up and get the kicker. As you look through this scheme and study it and call me with some questions, guys, you're going to see we always have a hat for a hat. There's very seldomly just a free guy running anywhere. And that's why it's important to just trust and stick forward. This is a bad scenario with our returner sticking it back to the left and trying to get up the field. Would love to see him keep pressing it all the way to the right. Okay, same game. I think it's a similar scenario. Boom, want to pause it there? Everybody's in the same spots. I'll reiterate that. Don't forget to teach your guys on the front line. Find the fullback. He's going to tell us where it's going. Okay? What we do in the back end <clears throat> on a shorter kick, we yell short. That tells everybody to go ahead and take five yards off their drop and get into their block a little sooner. Okay? This is an old term when we used to, like even in the NFL, they still use the fatter guys, the old linemen, the big guys. So we actually make it a fat call, even like in golf when you hit a chunky shot and they say, you you know, you fatted it. OK, what we use is the term fat if we want guys up in front of us to catch the ball. It's what we do. It's kind of become a fun joke. The old linemen tell me they can catch and it, it becomes kind of fun, which we got to do in the kicking game. But that's what we'll say when we want the guys up front to catch it. If they don't hear that, they know I'm going to block my guy. If they hear short, they know we're still catching the ball. But in my opinion, no matter what you say, you have to have two different terms for a short kick and a short kick that you want the up backs to catch. Whatever term you guys and your team come up with is important. OK, so we still call it the right return. We still get to our spots. And here we go. Much, much, much better job by my guy. The same game sticking to the called return. I want him to stay to the right. Even if we get tackled, look at this. We're already out to the 40-yard uh, line because he stayed with the return. We didn't do anything great. <clears throat> we didn't have an unbelievable block or double team or smash block where we took people out. We're a hat for a hat, and something we say in our program is ball me man. If we always are between our guy and the ball, they're not going to tackle us. So we're just slowly gaining yardage all the way through. Okay. Now, of course, he wants to cut back here at the last second to what he thinks is open ground instead of just flying through the front side of the return and gets tripped up and cut up because we don't have extra blockers over there. We always gain our extra blockers to the return side, the left or the right. OK, so you guys that are the skill guys and I can say this because I, I return kicks, you know, and I always thought I could cut back and have this and that state of the return. It's no different than offensive guys. You know, saying hit the hole where your vision is. We're running inside zone, man. But if it's all muddy, stick to where the old line is working. Don't cut back across everything because you saw one big play cut back across the butt. Okay, so that was a pretty good job right there. I think we're out at the 50 or just across the 50. And it wasn't some unbelievably beautiful, you know, we've all seen power drawn up and it creases and you watch the video. It doesn't look like that and it doesn't need to look like that. Everybody's just getting blocked or pestered enough that they can't get off a block to actually make the tackle.